engine surging, hunting, revving up and down is probably one of the most common problems you'll come across with small engines, whether it's a tiller, snowblower, or in this case, a lawnmower, it doesn't matter. Pretty easy thing to fix. Keep watching, I'm gonna show you how. So all these small engines have a governor that helps it maintain an RPM. And so people will see that just moving back and forth. So their number one thing is, hey, my governor's broken. It's not. If your engine's revving up and down, your governor's working. That's what it's supposed to do. It's keeping your engine running. But what it is, is this carburetor is dirty, and that is why it's hunting up and down. More specifically, the idle circuit. I can explain a little bit more if you'd like, but essentially you need to clean or replace your carburetor. I'm gonna go over a couple steps of how to do that, but also a couple little bypasses that you can get away with if you're not mechanically inclined at all. So let's go over that. In this scenario, the owner actually figured out that if he left choke on, it ran better. So he just hooked up a wire. But most modern engines, you have no control of the choke at all. But this just dumps a little bit more fuel, kind of bypasses the, uh, the idle circuit in the carburetor and allows it to run. And he's been running it that way for years. Uh, a little janky, but hey, it works. So we're going to get rid of that because we don't need that anymore at all. He's going to be happy he doesn't have to wire it shut anymore. But we're going to just dive in here. Looks like he takes pretty good care of it. And we're just going to take the carburetor off. Now, say you don't want to get to this point where you need to take the carburetor off because you do have to take the carburetor off. Are, are there any additives or something you could put into here? There's um, things like sea foam, <clears throat> snake oil, or other things you can put in there like medic in a can. There's a bunch of other stuff. Essentially, the only thing that's going to break down gummy fuel in there is acetone. That's a, the ingredient that breaks it down. You can just literally take acetone or nail polish remover and for a full tank of gas you could put in you could probably put in up to about a quarter of a cup maybe if you got a bigger gas tank on your mower or something like you put a quarter cup it'll run it won't hurt anything and just as long as you're running that thing through you run that through that may clear it up but i still suggest you dive into the carburetor but if you're going to go out and spend a ton of money on uh like the sea foam or something, just buy acetone. That's the only thing in there that does anything. And put that through, and that'll clear out any gummy carburetor and suck it through the engine and actually clean up carbon and everything else. But still, pull off your carburetor. That's just kind of a last resort if you're not mechanically inclined and don't want to do anything and you're just trying to save an old junky engine. So all of these carburetors have a bowl to hold the fuel. Yep, the problem lies right under there. And I'll watch guys just try to access this and take this off and try to work on everything from under here and they're upside down under that and they'll spend three times as long versus just taking the five minutes just to take this off. Serious, it's easy, let me show you. The best part about engines made in the last 15 years is they're all, this is actually a Honda, but they're all Honda clones. Everybody just copied Honda because it did such a great job. This is just gonna fall right out. Everything just wiggles out. Um, you, sometimes you'll have a choke lever that you, needs to come off. Here we have two holes. We have a spring for a, um, to help the throttle return and then we actually have a hole for the throttle. The easiest thing to do is, not with a pen, is actually get something sharp and I'm gonna use the back side of my knife, but I'm just gonna scratch the metal because some of these will have, they'll have four holes and you don't know which one it goes to. But we'll just take that off. And then the carburetor always bends in a way that comes off. I may need to take off the fuel line first. Sometimes you can get away with it. I'll take off the fuel line. Okay, fuel line's off. And now I should just be able to rotate the carburetor in a way. To slide my main governor to throttle butterfly rod off. And then the little spring as well. And that's it. Carburetor's off. Now it's easy to work. Seriously, that took 90 seconds. So this side is the choke, choke closes, forces the engine to suck air through here, which leads directly down to the bowl, which forces the engine to suck fuel directly out of the bowl of the carburetor versus just sucking majority of air. So the reason it surges is because of this idle circuit. There's a little hole on this side, um, some carburetor, it's on this side, but on this one, it's this side, pushes air back, pull, it has a little fuel bleed up here, and then there's little holes on the inside right here. So when the idle, when the butterfly's virtually closed, idle, butterfly closed, are used kind of almost interchangeably on these carburetors, 
because when it's full throttle, sometimes the butterfly will almost be completely closed. Anyway, the air comes back, fuel comes up, and as the air passes across here, and the fuel line comes up, fuel hole going down to the bowl, comes across, it actually pulls in a mixture of fuel and air, atomizes it, and pulls it in behind the butterfly. So when the butterfly is almost completely closed, it's pulling fuel, is bypassing the throat of the carburetor, the main hole that goes all the way through, and just pulling air through a little teeny hole here, past here, pulls fuel up as it goes, and pulls it behind the butterfly, and it runs off of that. So just like when you're getting on the freeway, yes, you push the gas pedal down all the way. This is the same thing. This is your gas pedal all the way down. But once you get up to speed, you're, you know, yes, you're not just idling, but the engine is slowing down. So it gives less and less and less. And it runs off of this idle circuit, even at speed, unless it's under heavy load, unless you're going to pass somebody. And then it opens it back up. And the governor monitors all that for you. And why the governor surges, why the engine revs up and down, is it essentially goes to where it's supposed to, kind of lets off the gas and the engine wants to die because no fuel is coming through that little hole. And so it revs it back up. And then, okay, and then it lets back off. And then, nope, it revs it back up. Same thing if you were driving on the freeway. And if you let off the gas pedal to kind of coast and your engine wanted to die, you'd have to catch it again and re-rev it up, you know, to keep your engine running. You know, luckily, we don't have to deal with that problem. But the same thing is if we dealt with a kit carburetor like this. So all we need to do is clean the passage from here through here and up to there. Really simple. We'll take off the bowl of the carburetor. Um, let's just look inside, but I'm assuming this carburetor is gonna be pretty clean. Yeah, the yeah, carburetor spotless. So people will look in there like, my carburetor's spotless. Why is it doing this? Okay, so sometimes it's on this side, sometimes it's on that side. The air bleed depends kind of on which way the, the butterfly opens, um, but you won't be able to see, but there's a little teeny hole you guys see that little piece right there in that hole? That is actually a piece of grass clogging up that jet. Okay, you see those little holes right there? That is our idle circuit. Okay, I pulled that little piece of debris out, but the way you test that is simple. Carburetor cleaner, not WD-40, brake cleaner, Carburetor cleaner is essentially acetone with some other things, but the acetone is what breaks down bad fuel. And I'm just going to stick it into the air jet at the front and then I'm going to bring it around to the back. And then we could just, you know, wear some safety glasses and don't spray it in your eye because you don't know where it's going. But I can just sit here and spray it through those passages and make sure they're all working. So if you know how it works, it's easy to fix. See, spraying. But also I said it picks up fuel off the bottom. And so it actually goes through this little, there's a little Phillips screw right here. So when I'm spraying through there, I should also see some coming out the bottom. Not as much, but I see, I, oh, I get a little bit, but not barely any. Um, so I might be clogged up from da going down to up. So it might not pull any fuel up. So we can take out this Phillips screw right here as well and check that passage. And you'll just notice there's a little brass piece down in there. So I can just spray from here directly to into the bottom and I should have fuel. And I'm not really getting any. Nope. So we are clogged up from here going down in as well. So the piece of grass clogging up through there was just part of our problem. We're also clogged up from the bottom. On this particular car, carburetor we share a jet for our high and our idle okay we unscrewed the jet this is actually a dual purpose jet some uh, small engines use a separate low speed and high speed you know an idle circuit and a high speed circuit a jet this one shares it so we'll actually just make sure it's clear I actually use copper wire why you can use, people use um, like welding tip cleaners, copper wire. I always just have a little chunks of copper stranded wire around. It doesn't, it will not enlarge in or, or scratch up the brass. I don't want to enlarge in the jet. It's already the right size. Um, we'll pop off the, the float and the needle real fast. That's easy enough. Just get that out of the way. Um, but now we're in there. 
we have something that we have an emulsion tube in there we can clean out don't really need to in this case because it actually runs pretty good but i'll pop it out just for you guys um, but now you can see if you just follow the lumps say i can't get i'm not getting a spray between here down to the bowl well if i look there's a lump here and it comes down here and then it's plugged off right here but if I look on the other side, there's a plug right here. So they've drilled a hole. So this lump comes over here and there's a hole drilled all the way through into this passage over here. So essentially, if it comes down here, it's drilled in to right there into this main chamber. You guys can see that. And so I've got to see if I can get fluid to pass between here and over into there and now that I took out the main jet I can actually see in there and sometimes just removing this passes by those threads and clears them out or around them so now if I spray from the top down in yep ah oh, you guys can't see but I'm getting you can see it bubbling up there. I cleared it out, just moving stuff around in there. And it could be because I sprayed the acetone the carburetor cleaner in there 30 seconds ago. It's already dissolved, whatever gunk. So that's cleared out. Um, now, if the engine won't start, it's probably just clogged. You know, this is your main jet. That's just clogged. Pull that out and just run a wire through it. Done. And if it doesn't run right, there's an emulsion tube in there that mixes air. Let's see if we can get it. It just sticks up, just barely. There's that thing right there. And you can see it right in the bottom, the brass piece. It's the other side of our emulsion tube. Some uh, on like old Tecumseh's and stuff like that, they're plastic. There, it came out. And if you start prying on it and it doesn't just pop right out, don't mess with it. We've got a piece of grass right here. It could have come from over here. But all it is is a straight through hole right through the middle and a bunch of little side holes. And so that's easy enough to check. Just put your finger over the front and the back and you should just see a passage. Yeah, see, nice and clean. This engine, this carburetor wasn't very dirty. And so put that in, put it back together, we're done. Everything is cleaned. All the passages are clear. That's as simple it is as it is to clean virtually all carburetors these days. Main jet slash idle circuit jet combined. Put the float back on. Now, if your carburetor is leaking fuel or it's leaking out the throat of the carburetor, it's your needle in your seat. It's not um, seating. This particular one is just a rubber tip right on there. If it's super old, yeah, you can replace this. Or sometimes the acetone will soften up the rubber and make it seal again and put that in there if you want to know before you put it back together if it's going to seal use your mouth put it on there lift it up blow let go if you hear even the slightest hiss it's you know don't push down on it but if you hear even the slightest hiss it's going to leak nope see this one wasn't not worried about that clean out the bowl bowl's clean and put that together bowl gasket will not everything's back put it back together and we'll go now you can buy these carbs for like 20 bucks on ebay but you're not going to find as good as one as the original one if it's not all crow i mean i say i can save 99.9 .9 of all the carburetors that come in uh, i buy very very few carbs but the ones i have bought are pretty poorly constructed or the jet size is wrong and they just the engine never runs right but um, they're better than nothing if you cannot save this, but try to save this first. Seriously, it's like a five, 10 minute job. Okay, let's see. Choke on. Run back. I shut the throttle so it's running purely on idle circuit right now. See, no issues whatsoever. Good 
new set of tires. Look at this. Okay, ready? No. Jump. 